Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is an extremely fun game that improves on a lot of things from the previous games, but it's not without its flaws. My review is going to be brutally honest because while I absolutely loved every second of my very first playthrough of the story, I think there's some pretty simple changes that need to be made in order to make this an absolutely amazing game. But let's start with something that I enjoyed a lot, the story. A lot of you guys know that I generally don't care at all about story in video games. I'm from the old school generation that played on NES, so there was no story most of the time. As long as the plot is moving the action forward, I'm happy. But with Wonderlands, there were a lot of moments that I absolutely loved. I'm not going to spoil anything here about the story though, so just know that I legitimately laughed out loud multiple times and it's been a while since I've done that with a story. I really enjoyed the narration of Tina and the new NPCs voiced by both Andy Sandberg and Wanda Sykes. And of course, Will Arnett absolutely owns as the Dragon Lord. This is absolutely, unequivocally, the best villain in the series behind Handsome Jack in my opinion. There's also a ton of side quests, including major quests, which are like the jar quest that I showed you guys in my previous footage from the demo. So if you want story content, this honestly might be the best overall story in the whole series, in my opinion. Now let's offset that with something that I'm not a fan of. On subsequent playthroughs, you have to play through the tutorial mission each time on a new character. Honestly, a feature like we had on Borderlands 3 that gives you a skip past the early levels and tutorial missions would be huge. In this game, just skip Skipping to the hub city would be a huge quality of life improvement for additional playthroughs as I absolutely want to make one of each of the starting classes. This would only require a skip of four or five levels as well. Ultimately, this is a fairly minor complaint all things considered, but wasting 30 minutes doing a tutorial mission that you cannot skip does turn me off on additional playthroughs and the Borderlands 3 system was far better for this. One of the major problems for Borderlands 3 at launch was performance, but Wonderlands was smooth as butter for me. The only issues that I had were UI, like the map inspection and item inspection controls were reversed, at least on controller for some reason. Choosing a point on the map is often tricky when using mouse and keyboard. The game feels like it was optimized for controller play, but other than those issues, the actual performance of the game was great. I was able to run around 90 FPS on an RTX 2080 at pretty much all times, but my eyes can't see a difference between 60 and 90, so I just opted to do 60 the whole time and never saw any frame drops screen tearing or anything like that. The level design is absolutely amazing. This is one of the huge standouts in this game. Every single map is gorgeous, overflowing with life and beauty, and the overworld is brilliantly designed and fun to explore as well, which brings me to my next complaint, and this is a big one. There are over 70 named enemies that do not respawn in their original locations, and a lot of them are very fun and even have their own arenas on maps. This is over 70 potential loot locations locations for dedicated drops and having named enemies respawn is a staple in this franchise. One that I personally fought very hard for on Borderlands 3, which at launch also suffered from the same problem and took a little bit of time before they fixed that. This is a fix that hopefully isn't too complicated, but it's absolutely necessary in my opinion. That said, some of those named enemies do appear again in the chaos chamber, so you will see some of them again. I'm not sure what their loot pools are like yet, but I felt like farming for dedicated drops was pretty rough. I rarely saw any drop twice from a boss, even after dozens of farms, so I'm not sure if somebody left out a digit on drop rates or if Gearbox is trying to get you to go into Chaos Chamber to get drops randomly or something. That remains to be seen. Speaking of Chaos Chamber, I can't show you guys footage of it in this review, but I can tell you I loved it. Extremely fun activity, which you can sort of customize to your liking. There's currently a max of 20 Chaos levels, and like Digistruct Peak and OP levels, you have to beat the chaos chamber on a given level to progress to the next higher up level. However, there is no shame in staying on lower chaos levels or even leaving chaos off if you want to, because the main benefit to chaos levels is getting chaotic and volatile versions of items that you can also get randomly as drops. It remains to be seen if some of those drops are only available in chaos chamber, but the system is very cool in a preferred change over mayhem levels and OP levels like we've had in previous games. Long story short, a gun at level 40 without chaos or volatile will be almost as strong as the level 40 chaotic or volatile version of the gun. But that extra power that you get on chaotics and volatiles is needed for those harder chaos tiers. Hidden items like golden dice, scrolls, marbles, and poetry pages are amazingly well done. Some are very cleverly hidden. So for those of you guys that are completionists and looking for things to go explore and find, there is plenty to do on this game. We're talking 
talking like by the end of this two week early access, I was at 50% exploration. <laughs> so you're gonna have lots to do. The character creation system is amazing. It even gives you the option to make wild random variations. There's almost no limit to what you can do when you're making your fate maker. You also get to choose a backstory which will affect some of your starting hero stats. So choose carefully because once you choose those, those are locked in. However, one downside for me is that I cannot change my character's name or my companion's name like we've always been able to do in previous Borderlands games. I'm hoping that they add this feature in the future. It's kind of a minor complaint, but for those of us that like to do playthroughs and I like to choose a new name every day, it kind of sucks that I can't do that now. Build diversity in this game is exceptional. When I first learned that there was just going to be a single skill tree per character, I was about to lose my mind thinking that they have killed build diversity, but I was so wrong. Multi-classing gives you four action skills to choose from, plus you have hero points and myth rank to add additional layers of diversity. You can also change your second class anytime after you beat the story. Just go to the new use station in Brighthoof and choose the option to respect your points. One of the things that a lot of Borderlands players disliked in Borderlands 3 were anointments. Well, they make a return as enchantments in Wonderlands, but they are improved in many ways. First off, they are far less necessary in order to do damage, but getting the right one can help you get through that next chaos level if you were struggling. However, there are still too many enchantments in my opinion. But right at launch, there is a reroll machine available and it is very cheap at first. You do need to beat the story before you can access it, however. You can even add enchantments onto items that did not spawn with them. Co-op mode in this game is great. It was so much fun playing with my buddy in the early access, but there are some issues with the UI in this as well. For starters, the Borderlands 3 system of not notifying other players when a teammate goes down his back, maybe even worse, the UI sometimes shows that a teammate or a companion is dead, but they're not. And that sometimes takes you out of a fight because you're looking around trying to find them and help them out. Bringing back the Borderlands 2 fight for your life audio cue and giving us a skull beside a dying teammate or a companion's name would be extremely helpful. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even some sort of indicator on the minimap since during the chaos of Chaos Chamber, it can be pretty hard to keep track of where your friends are. A lot of times, whenever one of us would go down, we would have to yell, ping the floor where you're at so we could find them. And that's not ideal <laughs> because when you're in fight for your life, you're trying to shoot enemies. So taking time out to like ping the ground where you're at is just, it's not great. However, a huge win for this game, in my opinion, are the boss fights. They are absolutely amazing even the side mission mini bosses have some cool mechanics and arenas but again we need them to respawn so we can go back and enjoy them some more every story boss fight was amazing i loved every single one of them there's some really cool mechanics in a lot of these uh, boss fights too they took me back to a time when i was younger and you had to like study enemy attacks and figure out how to dodge them or deal with them a little trial and error at times but a plus plus for me on boss fights so all in all this game is amazing i absolutely could not stop playing it during my early access i played it every single day for four to eight hours a day i played it so much that i didn't even make any videos on it until the absolute last minute because i was too busy playing but with a little bit of tlc this game could honestly become the new fan favorite in the franchise it's got a great story great villain good pacing boss fights hidden items to hunt for and a fun replayable and varied end game wonderlands is a must-have for borderlands fans looking to try a new take on the franchise with the things we love about previous games. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more Wonderlands and Borderlands content. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.